O Covenant family, we know these are difficult times. I don't have to say much more than that, and we know what is going on among us and before us in our world today. And yet, I believe right here in this very day, our God offers us a major gift, a way to live a life in the abundance of Jesus Christ. Our God invites us into a life of confession. Now, when I say a life of confession, you may be thinking, uh, Pastor John, that doesn't sound like a particularly happy thought. When I hear the word confession, it doesn't really get me excited or get me uh, laughing or smiling or thinking, oh good, this is going to be a fun one. This is going to make me feel all better. But wait until we think about a life of confession from a gospel-centered foundation with a gospel perspective. A life of confession is very, very good news. What a gift it is that we are invited to live a life in which daily, and even more than daily, we are free to be honest about everything that has happened. We are free to share with our God and with one another the ways that we have fallen short, the doubts that we have, the mistakes that we've made, because, friends, as a gospel-centered people, we know that we say these confessions, we pray these prayers to a God who meets us with forgiveness, a God who meets us in mercy, a God who looks at us, and instead of seeing our sin, instead of seeing our brokenness, a God who looks at us and sees God's very Son, Jesus Christ, because of what God has done for us in Christ. And so, friends, to live a life of confession is to live a life free, free to be our full selves, free to know that, yes, we make mistakes, but then we run to our God, and he wants to run to us and to heal us and to turn us toward love and to give us life anew. What a gift it is that we don't have to live a life where we're hiding. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that wonderful that we get to live a life where we don't have to focus on the past, we don't have to get stay upset about what has happened because we know that we can go to our God anew. We can say what we did wrong or what happened. And we know that our God wants to heal us. Our God wants to say, that's over with and done. And I've got good news for you. I love you and I want to take you somewhere new. I want to share this love with you in such a way that you are healed and that those around you see me and they see my love. I want to call you and send you out to touch others with my great love, that they may know my forgiveness, that they may know how good I am, that they may know what I offer to each of them in Jesus Christ. Oh, friends, it is a wonderful gift as a people who by God's grace know the good news of Jesus Christ to know we are invited to live lives of confession. We are invited to stop wherever we are anew and to say, We can just be honest and we can just acknowledge our own brokenness, our own limits, our own mistakes. And friends, we can do those things knowing that God tells us, my child, you are forgiven. I love you. Would you go with me anew into this world and live a life of love? Let us go deeper into this gift, how we receive it, how we open it anew each day. What does it look like on a daily basis to practice a life of confession. One of the things that it means is that when something hard happens or something happens that we don't feel good about, whether it's we know that we've made a mistake ourselves or we're just frustrated by something else that someone has said or done or just what's going on among us, what does it mean to say we can stop and go before our God? Some of us go to our knees. Some of us do it with our eyes open while we're walking around. Some of us do it in different ways where we share it with one another but we confess our sins or we acknowledge to God how we feel and how we're and what we're thinking about what's going on, knowing that God right there as we confess will remind us of God's presence, will remind us of God's healing nature, will remind us that we are loved. So what does that mean? Maybe it means that we're going around social media and we see a few posts that are fine and then we see something that really disturbs us because it's somebody that we disagree with or it's somebody we think that has it wrong, somebody that we think is lying even. And so we feel that, we feel that pain and frustration. And then what does it mean to say, 
we're going to look to our God, acknowledge, I don't like this, or I disagree with this, or I'm upset, and then be reminded again, right? Reminded by the gospel that God loves us and God loves them. Reminded that God is at work among us and this isn't the end of the story. God will reconcile us. God will bring us back together. Remind us that in the end, God is truth. And so the truth of God is gonna be what shows forth eventually and always. And so we can experience that moment differently, living a, what I'm calling a life of confession. Or what about just our own sins? Friends, we do it. We all make mistakes. I don't know about you, but I, I'll find myself, I talk to somebody and then I go afterwards, you know, I said something that I shouldn't have shared or, you know, I went too far on that one thing and maybe it was a little bit beyond what, what I was called to say or I got selfish and was thinking about myself right then and, and had an opportunity to care for somebody else and didn't do it well. That happens to us and and sometimes they're passing thoughts and sometimes they kind of get us down. But what does it mean to live a life of confession where as soon as that happens and we have that realization, what I'll call that conviction, we're able to go to our God and say, and go to one another and say, you know what? I did it again. I, I messed up. I'm sorry. I sinned. I, I fell short. And to be reminded again by God, we need to hear it, right? We, we beat ourselves up so much, but we need to hear it anew. Be reminded by our God, you are forgiven. I love you. I want to use you in this world. I have given you gifts and I want to use you to do something good, to do things in my name, to be a minister of the gospel where the kingdom of God is coming on earth as it is in heaven. I want to use you. You're not too broken. Your mistakes of five seconds ago or of the past or your emotions of frustration or anger are not the end of the story. You are worthy of my love, and you are one who I want to use in this world. So friends, a life of conviction means that we just keep getting called back to the good news of the gospel. A life of confession means that we get to live a life where we experience transformation. I'll tell you, in my experience, the way that I change, the way that by God's grace, I have in some ways become more like Jesus, are through this wonderful gift and through this means of living a life of confession. What has happened is that as I have had friendships and accountability groups, as I have had a practice, hopefully more and more, of being able to run to my God when I make mistakes, what happens is God starts changing me. There is transformation where habits are broken, where, where I am able to live differently tomorrow and I get a little bit better. And then, yeah, I might fall back, and, but as I practice a life of confession, new and better habits are formed, and, and somehow by God's great grace, by the work of the Spirit in our lives, we become more like Jesus. Friends, we become lovers of others before ourselves. And so a life of confession, a life in which we are reminded of the good news and the truth of the gospel anew with all that goes on among us, in our lives is a life in which we experience abundance, we experience joy, we experience hope, and friends, we experience love. These are hard times. I am sure that almost every conversation we have, whether it's with a family member, a church member, a neighbor, anyone that we see, we kind of quickly are likely to talk about some of the hard realities we face, some of the challenges among us, some of the adaptations some of the tragedies that others are experiencing. And yet, as we do that, we have an opportunity to refocus on what God is doing and what God will do among us. Friends, a life of confession means we have hard conversations and we are reminded of the gospel truth in the midst of our day. Covenant family, our scripture has reminded us today that as we live a life of confession, a life in which we are reminded anew all throughout each day of the good news of Jesus Christ and how much it can change the whole world and our whole perspective on everything that we experience, our scripture in James has reminded us that we, in some ways, will see the sick saved, we will see the broken healed, we will see friends transformation in our life and in the lives of those among us? 
Friends, we will live a life in which we see miracles. What happens is we live a life of confession, is we are reminded almost constantly and always of the good news of Jesus Christ and of the effect it has on all around us. It changes us. It changes us from a people of division and hatred, a people of selfishness and sin, into a people of love, into a people who serve, into a people who put someone else before us and then God does amazing things. There is healing. There is transformation. There are There is joy when it seemed like there could only be despair. Friends, our world desperately needs this. Our neighbors, our many different kinds of neighbors, desperately need us to share with them the gospel. We all need to be reminded, right? Some of us needed this anew today, to be reminded of the good news of Jesus Christ because maybe we've been focused on only the hard realities that are true among us too. But we remember as we confess, we remember as we acknowledge our own limitations and the hard things that are going on among us, that God is good and that God is present and that God loves all of us. And so friends, we are invited anew today to practice a life of confession. I know from my own experience by God's grace, I know from the many people who have been a gift to me in this life because they have walked alongside me as brothers and sisters in Christ as iron sharpens iron, like Proverbs tell us, tells us, they have been a people that have shown me that as we practice a life of confession, we are transformed. We, by God's grace, grow in Christian love. Friends, we are invited to practice this anew together. Would you, the next conversation you have, would you, Afterwards, think about it and reflect on what you might want to say to God about that conversation you had. Would you stop now or end your day and go to God and be honest about all the different parts of the day and the hard parts and the good parts alike? Would you, with your brothers and sisters in Christ or your family, would you practice this? Would you share with them ways that you've fallen short, knowing that speaking it out loud helps us to change? It helps us to change habits. It helps us to do it a little differently the next time by God's grace. Oh, friends, the good news of Jesus Christ is that we are invited into a life of confession, and it is a joy-filled life because it is a life in which we are reminded that we are forgiven. It is a life in which we are reminded that God wants to invite us into repentance, where we turn around, where, yes, we made our mistakes, but yes, God is bigger than that, and wants to transform us, wants to use us for love and for good. God invites us to be God's presence in the lives of those around us in our world, and oh, does our world need to know the good news. So instead of, friends, hearing the word confession and thinking, oh, that's a tough one, that's a negative one, friends, we are filled with joy anew today because we know the good news of Jesus Christ And we know that we can face all that is happening within us and among us in this world. And we know that our Creator lives and our Redeemer is present offering us this good news. May we practice a life of confession as the Spirit guides us anew into this world, into a world that needs God's love, into a world in which God is at work. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.